Ninja versus Pirates. Who will win? Ninjago Skybound is somewhat of a tough nut to crack. On the one hand, it follows the show's current format of taking an idea from the first two seasons and expanding on it, but on the other hand, it doesn't seem to be operating in a particular genre like the past few seasons have. It's weird, because the trailer for this season showcased it as a season where the ninja are now public enemy number one, but as I alluded to in the possession review, that's not really what this season's about. I guess that's why most people consider this season to be a disappointment, but is it really as bad as everyone says it is? After all, many Ninjago fans didn't like Possession, and that's one of my favorite seasons, so maybe the same will be true here. I'm not saying that false advertising isn't a valid complaint. If you've seen my episode reviews for Power Rangers, you know how negative I can be when an episode advertises something only to deliver something else. But what I am saying is that I'm willing to give this season the benefit of a doubt, despite the change in style that occurs this season. I know that's weird for me to say, given how I spent a good chunk of the Ninjago movie review ranting about the new character designs for season 8, but I am still going to give that season a chance, and hopefully I'll be able to talk about it by the end of this year. But in order to get to that season, I need to first talk about this one, so let's see if season 6 is as bad as everyone says it is as we look at LEGO Ninjago Skybound. The season begins with what looks like the ninja on yet another mission, but it's actually a PSA constructed by Dareth, who's now the team's image consultant. This leads into a montage of the ninja running from fans who go crazy over the team, and through interactions with the fans, Dareth, and a talk show host, we see that Nia isn't seen as a respected member of the team just because she's a girl. Later, Cole reveals to Jay and Zane that he can now turn invisible, which explains why he couldn't see his future self reflected in the tomb last season, and after Cole leaves, Zane and Jay talk about what his reflection showed. <sighs> you still haven't told him what you saw in your future's reflection, have you? Huh. And ruin our friendship? No thanks. Besides, even if it were true, her mind's made up. It's never gonna happen. <sighs> I was fine until I saw us together. Now it's all I think about. Misako, in the meantime, tells Nia not to let the world define her as just the girl ninja before Lloyd tells the others about potential danger. Sensei Wu informs the ninja that Klaus' spirit escaped the cursed realm and has been seen heading to Styx for an unknown reason, adding that the team should stop whatever he's planning to do. As the team heads out, Kai mentions that Dareth wanted them to see a kid in the hospital for publicity, and though Lloyd feels that Sensei's orders are more important, the rest of the team convinces him that they can make a quick stop. Unfortunately, the ninja are soon mobbed by fans with helicopters surrounding the building, and though they make it to the roof without a problem, Jay and Nia end up arguing when Jay offers to help Nia with Air Jitsu to get to the next building. Jay jokes that the couple's just having their first fight, which only makes things worse, since Nia asks what he meant. Dareth shows up in one of the helicopters, overjoyed about the publicity, but when Lloyd mentions they're on a mission, Dareth gives the team a ride to Sticks, hoping to get a scoop. Sadly, the stall gives Klaus enough time to find what he was looking for in the teapot of Turan, and after rubbing the artifact, he unleashes the almighty Jin, Nauticon. Like all genie, Nauticon can only grant three wishes that can't be death love or more wishes, but like a true Jin, he's able to give wishes a dark twist, tricking Klaus into the teapot before vanishing. Nanakan then appears in the city, where he gets some information from a nearby kiosk. You're talking to InfoVision. Ask a question, and maybe I can answer it. Where is my crew? You'll have to be more specific. The crew of Misfortune's Keep. Misfortune's Keep, the most feared pirate ship that ruled the high seas, taken down by Captain Soto and his destiny bounty at the end of the era of the Stone Warrior. The Misfortune's Captain, Nother Khan the Jinn, with power to grant others' wishes, was trapped in the teapot of Tyran, while his crew was later marooned in separate realms. Separate realms? After the ninja discovered the realm crystal in the tomb of the first Binjitsu Master, it is common knowledge that Ninjago is one of 16 realms. Which realm is Delara in? No known image of Delara. 
quartermaster of Misfortune's Keep and love of Nadakon the Jinn, died shortly after Nadakon's imprisonment. Died? Where is this realm crystal? The location is classified, since realm crossing is prohibited. It is under the protection of Sensei Wu and the masters of Spinjitzu. Then tell me how to find them. Looks like we got a new villain on our hands, folks. Unable to find Klaus and Styx, the ninja tried to figure out what to do, but catch a news report of imposters posing as them and breaking various laws. The ninja make a run for it while the whole town tries to apprehend them, but before they can be rescued by Misako, the bounty's taken down by police. Lloyd tells the team to split up so they can get away, and though Jay thinks it's a bad idea, the ninja end up separating. The beginning of the second episode showcases the new intro for the season, which for me personally is much improved from the ghost whip. There's just so much energy to this theme that not only makes it a joy to listen to, but also portrays the season's tone as a great pirate adventure. Back to the season proper, the ninja attempt to keep a low profile, trying to figure out who framed them, and when they make it to Sensei Wu's old monastery, Zane shows the team security footage of Nadakon capturing their master. Jay's focus is elsewhere, however. If the I do believe smiling is not the proper reaction when one is warned about a jinn. But Nia said they grant wishes, and with wishes, anything is possible, right? My logic parameters do not allow me to understand the full extent of a wish, but I am curious where you are going with this. Nia made it clear there was no way we'd ever end up together, but I know for a fact from seeing my future that we do. Maybe a wish is what it takes. Maybe this is how she falls for me. Oh, you poor lovesick idiot. Needing to learn more about the Jin, the ninja make a plan to split up again, but they're soon caught by Ronin, who's been tasked by police to capture the team. While that's going on, Nadakon finds the location of the Realm Crystal by tricking an arrested Misako, and after he captures her, the Jin manages to steal the Realm Crystal from Borg's stronghold in Hiroshi's Labyrinth. The ninja are sent to the Cryptarium, this time is inmates, but as luck would have it, Captain Soto meets the team, telling them how he captured Nanakon centuries ago. Soto says that he used Tiger Widow Venom that can kill a normal man, but neutralized the Jin long enough to be put into the teapot. Lloyd asks where the team can find a Tiger Widow, but Soto only promises to give the heroes a map to the beast if they can break him out of jail. Back with Nanakon, the Jin uses the Realm Crystal's power to find and bring back his old crew of Misfortune's Keep, save for the deceased Dalara. However, rather than wreak havoc on Ninjago, Nanakon tells his crew that their time has passed, and that the only reason he brought them back is so he can say goodbye. Nanakon plans to return to his home realm of Jinjago, with his crew vowing to stay by his side, but when he gets back home, Nanakon finds the place falling apart. Nanakon's father, the king, tells him that the realm is being destroyed thanks to the fall of the cursed realm, and though Nanakon offers to save his father, the king refuses to abandon his realm. Lord of Souls, but that sword is meant for, meant for the king! Take it! It holds the life force of our forefathers and all its enemies that have fallen from its blade. The ninja will pay for what they have done. Man, and here I thought this season was gonna be short. The ninja, meanwhile, make good on their promise to free Captain Soto as they themselves make their escape, so Soto tells them that the map they need is on a lantern aboard Misfortune's Keep, as well as the fact that Nia looks like Nanakon's beloved Dalara. In order to find the ship, Jay and Nia disguise themselves as cops to check police records, while Zane and Kai retrieve the bounty, and Lloyd and Cole search the skies, but they check Nia's coordinates too late, as Misfortune's Keep has been upgraded to be able to fly. Nanakon returns to the police station to check their ninja search, only to discover Nia and Jay talking. It really is you, Dilar. <laughs> if I had a dime for every time I was broke. <sighs> what did he say? I expect it from others, but not you. What? Can I try and buy lunch for a friend? But I know you don't just see me as a friend. All week you've made it pretty obvious you're still harboring some feelings. I've tried to ignore it, but... It's because I'm from a junkyard, isn't it? Of course not. We're friends. Good 
friends. But that's all we are. And that's all we're ever gonna be. <sighs> Look, I'm already the girl ninja. But my role on the team shouldn't be defined by who I'm seeing, but who I'm fighting. <sighs> I get it. A real friend wouldn't put you in that position. I'm sorry, Mia. Thank you for understanding. You see, this is the kind of relationship stuff that makes this show so much better than current Power Rangers. Nauticon quickly finds Jay alone and tells him that he can help the Blue Ninja finally get the girl by granting three wishes, and because his mind's clouded by the visions he saw, Jay agrees against his better judgment. The first thing Jay wishes for is to be wealthy enough to give Nia whatever she wants, with Nauticon leaving, saying the wish was granted. Oh, there you are! I've been looking all over Ninjago for you. Don't worry, I won't report you to the authorities. Just delivering the mail. I'm sorry to inform you, but your father has passed. You have inherited his estate and lots and lots and lots of money. Why the glum face? You're rich! Oh god, oh no, this is too much, man. We've gone too far, we've gone too- Oh, hey. He's alive. Turns out, Jay's been adopted this whole time, with his foster parents giving him a key to a mansion belonging to his real father, Cliff Gordon, the actor who played Fritz Nottigan. After finding his father's book on wooing women, Jay is met by Nauticon, who asks for his second wish, and while he doesn't want to make any more wishes, the djinn tricks Jay into wishing he wasn't alone. On cue, Nia shows up, with Jay telling her that this is his secret hideout, before the two go to meet the others. During the meeting, the others try to figure out what to do, with Jay conflicted about keeping his interactions with Nauticon secret, but they soon see a news report of misfortune's keep flying through the city and causing destruction. The ninjas spring into action, engaging the enemy, where Kai runs straight into Nauticon, and after tricking the red ninja into using his three wishes, the fiery one is captured. However, things aren't all bad, as Cole's able to take the lantern from the ship, and Lloyd convinces the police chief to let him go. Jay takes what's left of the team back to his quote-unquote secret hideout, so Lloyd, Zane, and Nia check the lantern for the Tiger Widow's location. Cole doesn't buy that Jay would be able to get a new hideout all of a sudden, and asks his friend what's really going on. Jay comes clean about everything, revealing what he saw back at the tomb, and that he made a wish with Nauticon to win favor with Nia. How could you be so stupid to make a wish? You know everyone else was facing is now gone. It's cause back in the Spinjitzu Master's tomb, when everyone saw their future, and I told everyone I had an eye patch. I remember. Well, I saw something else. I saw the reflection of me and Nia together. What? I don't know how, but in the future, we end up with each other. Although she's made it painfully clear, I never stand a chance. So, when Nauticon found me, I couldn't resist. But who am I kidding? Nothing I'd do would impress her. After two wasted wishes, I was barely able to escape without making my third. You have to tell them. I can't! Then Nia will know! Please, I'm asking you as my best friend! But if anyone else gets hurt... Of course! If I'm lying, may I be struck down right now by the first Pinjitsu man- ah! Well, I can't see this going wrong at all. The ninja's focus is then pulled to a news report about a missing chunk of land from Ninjago City, so Zane orders his falcon to find Nauticon while the team makes their way to the island with the Tiger Widow. Speaking of the Jin, Nauticon shows his crew bits of land he's taken to the sky, revealing his plan to turn Ninjago into the new Jinjago. Later, Nauticon's forces capture the falcon, which leads him back to Zane, just as the ninja are going through an electrical storm, and because Zane needs to stay below deck during the storm, he He's easy prey for the Jin. Zane doesn't inform the others of Nauticon's presence, believing that he can outsmart the Jin, but Nauticon exploits Zane's emotions by removing Pixel, allowing him to capture the White Ninja. The rest of the heroes have other worries, however, since the storm caused them to crash, and though they make it to the island, Cole lets slip Jay's secret since the Blue Ninja didn't keep his end of the bargain. Why didn't you tell us? I'm sorry, I just couldn't. It's because when he saw his future, you were with him. You told me we were never gonna happen. I thought maybe these wishes were the very thing that would bring us together. I had to try. Well, I know who just nominated themselves to extract the Tiger Widow's venom. In my defense, I did just find out my parents are not my birth parents. Nothing? Really? Man, talk about from bad to worse. The four ninja find the Tiger Widow nest, where Jay's able to collect the venom, but not before Nauticon's crew shows up to stop the team. The resulting fight ends with Nauticon dumping the venom and kidnapping Jay, but on the bright side, the Jin dumped to the wrong canteen, with Nia showing that she still has the venom, even though the ninja now have no way of getting off the island. On board Misfortune's Keep, Nauticon goes about making Jay's life miserable, so he'll wish everything away, but Jay refuses to break. Jeez, we get it, you're the bad guy here. As he works through the day, Jay's able to send a message to the others in a bottle, and later, Later, Nauticon invites Jay to dinner so he can reveal his true intentions with Nia. Truth be told, I don't care about a new world, nor winning Nia's heart. 
Then why are you doing all this? Oh, I don't need her heart. I only need her hand. In marriage. Because when a Jin prince becomes king on Jin land, he is bestowed the greatest gift of all. Love? <laughs> no. Infinite wishes. Wow, and here I thought a genie needed someone to wish them free. The next day, Jay tries to incite a mutiny by informing Flitlock of Nautacon's evil plan, but the Jin's quick to call the ninja a liar, resulting in Jay being forced to partake in the crew's pastime of beating the snot out of each other. Despite getting the crap kicked out of him, Jay still refuses to wish for Nautacon, leading to quite the beating. I'm not hungry. You fought really well. You held your own l like a real pirate you should have this to look the part <laughs> an ipad just like what i saw in my future it's all coming true well one out of two ain't bad flintlock comes to the battered ninja saying jay was right and that he needs his help to get the drop on nauticon for the mutiny but the whole thing turns out to be a trick just to get the master of lightning's hopes up while all that's going on the other ninja try multiple times to leave the island but they get a lucky break when ronin and the cops show up the heroes ask if they're still seen as criminals but the police chief says the cops came to rescue the team so they can save ninjago when they get back to the city our heroes make a plan to rescue jay kevin dan the floor is yours. Who are they? Retrieval experts? Better. Screenwriters. So we got the message in the bottle from Jay that reads, Don't worry about me, worry about stopping Nauticon. That's nice and straightforward, but very unhelpful. What's more interesting is the message behind the message. Uh, you've lost me. Well, he wrote the message on the blueprints of one of their vehicles, a raid zeppelin. So we suggest we use a little movie magic to recreate one of their ships so you can blend into their fleet. Then, after our costumer disguises you as sky pirates and an acting coach teaches you their dialect, Cole, the ghost ninja, sneaks aboard the Misfortune's Keep to poison Nauticon with the Tiger Widow Venom and trap him. Good to know that Dan and Kevin actually have speaking roles this time around. Once the plan's set in motion, an invisible Cole's able to find and free Jay, but he's unable to poison Nauticon before the Jin discovers Jay escaped. As they try to leave, Cole and Jay end up running into the villains along with the other ninja, so Nia's taken with Nauticon while everyone else is locked away. Trying to think of a way out, Lloyd says the ninja can stop Nauticon by using some of their wishes, but when Cole and Jay shoot down the idea, Lloyd promises to only wish as a last resort. Meanwhile, Nauticon tells Nia that he'll release her friends if she promises to marry him, and when she refuses, Uses, the Jin orders for the boys to walk the plank. Being backed into a corner, Cole makes a wish returning the team's powers, and as they try to escape, the rest of the ninja, except Jay, start wishing like mad. Lloyd wishes to be wise like Wu, but because of the dark nature of Nauticon's wishes, he also starts rapidly aging. Don't worry about me! Jay and I have one wish left, and I'm not gonna use it to save myself! But you'll continue to get decrepit, and you already sound like an old person! Let me use my last wish to save you! Jay, the wise thing to do is to save it! I see beyond the now! You will need it! For when? For when it's sent from the heart! Sent from the heart?! Hearts don't talk! You think you can use your wishes to stop me? I wish for a sword! No, Nauticon! I know our wishes will stop you! Just not today! Jay! Don't worry! Together, those two will save us all! Hope you know what you're doing there, Lloyd. As Jay and Nia fall, they combine their energies to summon an electric water dragon, and after Lloyd and Cole are captured, Nauticon orders Flintlock to go get Nia. The last two ninja are able to escape thanks to an assist by police, and though Jay's worried about all they've lost, Nia reminds him that there's still hope. Misfortune's Keep soon finds the ninja in the city, but the police are able to hold off the villains long enough for them to find a safe house and escape. Before leaving, though, the police chief makes Jay promise that he'll protect Nia at all costs, which irks Nia since she can take care of herself. The two head to the safe house, which is located on the island that Zane's father was once trapped on, and with things finally calming down, the couple get a chance to come up with a plan. Let's see what kind of supplies we have. <sighs> uh, enough food for a week, change of clothes, the violet poison Nauticon doesn't know we have, and finally, one teapot of traveler's tea. But only just in case all else fails. You want to go over the plan again? Okay. If Nauticon shows up, we shoot him with the poison. Then, when he can't use his magic, I say my last wish and save Ninjago. <laughs> A wish Lloyd told me is said from my heart. <laughs> A heart that has no clue what it could be, but if said incorrectly, could likely make everything ten times worse. You'll think of it. You always do. 
Nanakon, in the meantime, interrogates the police for the ninja's location, and though he doesn't find out where they are, he does discover that they still have the Tiger Widow Venom. Flintlock tells Nanakon that they should forget about Nia since the crew have successfully remade Jinjago, but when their captain refuses to change course, Flintlock goes ahead with the mutiny. However, because Flintlock's still affected by a wish Lloyd made earlier, he's unable to shoot Nanakon, giving the Jin the upper hand and squashing the rebellion. Back on the island, Jay and Nia brainstorm over what the Blue Ninja's final wish could be, but they're interrupted when they see someone watching them. As they search the lighthouse, the two find another Zane, called Echo Zane, that was built by Dr. Julian while he was trapped there, so Jay allows the robot to help in determining a wish. While that's going on, Nanakon uses one of his crew members, Three Wishes, to find Nia's location, and though Jay wants to use Traveler's Tea to escape, Nia convinces him that they should stay and fight. As the two prepare for battle, however, Jay notices Nia's upset. If anything happens to me, use the Traveler's Tea to get yourself out of here! He's convinced he's gonna marry you! If that happens, nothing can stop him! Uh, um, you're upset. What did I say? It's nothing you said, it's just... Both of you seem so convinced you see a future with me. What voice do I have in all this? All my life, my identity has been defined by someone else. First I was Kai's sister, then I was your horrible girlfriend. Even when I tried to be Samurai X, Sensei told me no, I had to be the Water Ninja. Mia, I, I never knew you felt this way. All I want is to be able to choose my own destiny. Well then, what do you want to be? I don't know, but just having the power to choose for myself is enough. I believe you when you say we'll end up together, but it's my future too. I just wish I had a say in it. What is it about this place that makes people want to confess their feelings? As their conversation continues, Jay realizes that he can wish Nanakon mortal to prevent the Jin from gaining ultimate power, but the plan doesn't go so smoothly as the ninja are soon trapped by so many pirates. Guess we can finally say this truly is a last resort! <laughs> That's it? That's all that's left? That isn't big enough for both of us! But it is big enough for you! Mia, take the poison! I promised you I was gonna protect you, and I'm a man of my word! Oh, Jay, this is the reason. The reason for what? The reason you're the only one I've ever let into my heart. I don't know how to ever tell you this, but even before you saw a glimpse into our future, I saw it too. The first time I met you. Oh, you did? Hurry, Mia! The flame is dying out! But if I'm ever gonna have a say in our future, it's me who has to protect you, because it's you who has the wish! What are you doing? I'm speaking up for my future, and it's never felt better. Save me, Jay Walker. There's gonna be a wedding, and I want you to do something about it. There we go again, with the feelings. While Nia falls into Nanakon's clutches, Jay is sent back to his home in the junkyard, and as he tells his parents all that's happened, he worries the world is doomed now that he's by himself. This irks Jay's foster father, who yells at his son's pity party, saying this is a time for action, not talk, motivating Jay to create a task force to save Nia. This task force consists of Ronin, Captain Soto, Skylar, Echo Zane, Dareth, and the police chief. The new team makes it to Jinjago, but not before Nanakon is warned of their presence, however, because Jay's a ninja, he's able to find Nia undetected. Though Jay is unable to rescue Nia right at the time, the Water Ninja tricks Nanakon into leaving his sword for Jay to retrieve, so he takes it back to the others in hopes of freeing his friends. Soto tells Jay that he can enter the sword by being struck by it, saying that he'll have minutes to get out before he's trapped forever. Okay, thanks for the tip. I gotta work fast. So who wants to strike me down? Really? Am I that annoying? Okay. When I say go, on go. Affirmative. Wait! 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 This isn't easy, you know! What if you don't make it out? What are we supposed to do then? You're right. So listen carefully. If I don't return, I want you four to go so- Go? Wait! Oh, no, 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 wait. <laughs> He's not coming back, is he? As Jay goes around rescuing the ninja, the rest of the team fight off Nanakon's forces, giving the blue ninja just enough time to rescue everyone. The ninja split from the rest of the team to stop Nanakon, with Wu and everyone else heading to Ninjago to prepare for the worst should Jinjago fall from the sky. Unfortunately, the ninja don't make it in time to stop the ceremony, and with Nanakon suddenly being all-powerful, he very quickly begins getting rid of his crew as he goes after the ninja. What's left of the crew now tries to help the ninja escape so they can stop Nanakon with the venom, stopping at Misfortune's cape so they can regroup. Nanakon, in the meantime, uses his new power to resurrect Dallara in Nia's body, while Jay comes up with a plan to stop the Jin for good. We have the poison! Oh boy, that really hurt! I thought the poison was gone long ago. 
thanks to Clancy, it's right here. And you still have your wish. I do. But if there's anything I learned, it's that wishing for something won't make it come true. We all tried to get something from Nauticon, and look what happened. It only made him stronger. Right. But if we really want something, don't wish it to happen. Make it happen. But how are we going to get close? Maybe one of us doesn't have to get close. Me? You can take the shot from far away. Once he's weakened, we'll do the rest. But I can't even shoot water in an ocean. According to Nauticon, but he never held the real power. We did. Uh, I don't follow. All his wishes, he could never make them on his own. He needed us to make them come true. Just like when I wished to be rich, he tried to convince me my dad died. But that wasn't my real dad. My real dad lives with my mom, happy in the junkyard. That's true. So are you really adopted, or are we just sweeping that under the rug? Checking Jay's theory, Flintlock discovers that he's still a good shot, so the team puts Jay's plan into action, attacking Nauticon head on. Seeing what Nauticon's done to Nia, the ninja try not to hurt her while getting the gin in range for Flintlock, but Nauticon uses his power to freeze the ninja one by one. With Jay being the last ninja standing, Nauticon celebrates his victory, giving Flintlock is shot, but as Jay prepares to make his final wish on Nauticon, he discovers that Neo was struck by the venom as well. You have to make your last wish. You're the only one who can stop him. No, not if that means losing you. I never wanted to be part of your voice club anyway. No, Mia, don't say that. Yes, it's true. The greatest love stories do always end in tragedy. found that teapot in the first place. Okay, so we're doing a thing with time again. The ninja are brought back to the hospital roof, with only Jay and Nia having any memory of all that transpired, and the season ends with a shot of the two embracing, while the teapot of Turan is never found by Klaus. Ninjago Skybound certainly has its issues, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a bad season. I mean, it follows the same beats as the last few seasons of this show, with it being a 10 episode story with its own villain while focusing on one of the ninja. Skybound also represents a genre just like the other seasons, even if it's not the one that was initially advertised, but after watching it again, I think I know why that is. As I said earlier, this season isn't really about the prospect of the ninja being branded as criminals as seen in the trailer, but that's because the public enemy number one thing isn't so much of a theme as it is an inciting incident to get the ball rolling. This is clearly evident by the fact that the police stop chasing the ninja around episode 4 and even go out of their way to help the team later on. Instead, the actual genre that the season is focused on is that of romance because this is a love story about Jay and Nia repairing their relationship and getting back together. Together. After the whole love triangle thing that I wasn't a fan of a few years ago, this season goes a long way in getting the JS ship sailing again and is the next step for the show since the tease last season. Because of that glimpse of the future, getting back with Nia is all Jay can think about, and his time on Misfortune's Keep gives him the eye patch, making the audience believe that he could have a future with her. So if the romance aspect of this season is so important, why would LEGO hide it in their advertising creating this false perception? Well the sad fact is that LEGO Ninjago is a show that primarily targets an audience of boys meaning that anything deemed too girly like romance and love is not marketable to that audience according to advertisers. Fortunately, the creators of the show are fully aware of how ridiculous this double standard is, which is why Skybound uses the fact that Nia is now a full ninja like the rest of the team as social commentary. There are many scenes throughout the season that talk about how society views women, with Nia constantly being viewed as a victim who can't take care of herself despite her many accomplishments throughout the series. Heck, Nauticon's whole plan is to use Nia as a tool to gain ultimate
ultimate power, meanwhile Nier herself tries to convince everyone that she's more than just a pretty face. Still, even though Skybound tries to be really smart in how it handles these themes, going as far as writing the fanbase into the show, a lot of people still look down on this season because of the time travel element introduced at the end. Now, it's worth noting that up to this point in the show, Ninjago hadn't been known to handle concepts like time travel all that well. Since the last time it was brought up, it created a confusing mess for series continuity. This time, it's not that bad, but because only G and Nia seem to retain their memories for the rest of the season, it does make their character arcs the only ones that matter. Nia spends the season trying to change people's perception of her as just being the girl of the team, but because she's so set on proving herself as capable, she often refuses help from others, namely Jay, which leads to a lot of problems. Her insecurities stem from how she's tired of other people telling her what kind of person she needs to be, illustrated perfectly when she's possessed in the last episode, taking away her power of choice entirely. She ultimately learns through this experience that it's okay to ask for help every once in a while, and that she shouldn't put so much stock in what people think of her. Jay, being the one that's shown at the beginning of each episode, really gets put through the ringer this season, where he's forced to confront his own character flaw of not taking things seriously. Jay has always been viewed as the funny one in the cast, but this season makes it apparent that he only jokes because he doesn't know how to deal with his emotions, which goes a long way in explaining why he and Nia didn't work well as a couple the first time around. On top of that, Jay also lacks confidence in his own abilities, despite the fact that he's usually the first out of the team to master fighting styles, and he ultimately doesn't realize his own potential until he's the only ninja left to stop Nauticon. That said, his speech about Nauticon's wishes only being powerful because people believe in them not only sounds confusing because of the adoption thing, but also feels too easy given how powerful the Jin was shown to be. Speaking of Nauticon, he's a pretty effective villain as an all-powerful genie who can manipulate others, and with his intimidating presence, he's the perfect embodiment of what a Jin should be. I also really like how initially, all Nauticon wanted was to return to Jinjago, but because the ninja indirectly caused its destruction, he vowed vengeance. Unfortunately, he does devolve into your typical supervillain by the end, all of a sudden wanting ultimate power and turning on his own crew once he gets it. But he does fill the role of villain well, which is why I can't be too mad at his characterization. Overall, Ninjago Skybound is definitely the lowest ranked of the seasons I've talked about on this channel, but it's by no means a bad season. It still deals with its themes and ideas in an effective way, and I have to give the show credit for talking about a romance angle involving Jay and Nia as its primary focus, as well as providing social commentary. While certain elements of the season could have been tweaked here and there, it's still a part of the show that I feel comfortable recommending. Now before I can move on to the seventh season in Ninjago, I need to make a stop on the spookiest night of the year, so please join me next time as I talk about the show's first holiday special, Lego Ninjago Day of the Departed. I'm Nick, aka IronBet1993, reminding you to Ninjago! Go!